Uh-oh. Looks like the boom shoot tube is clogged. Let's see what else I have lying around. So let's talk about something nice and comforting from a time when none of us were worried about bills or rent or extrajudicial trials held under the Nevada desert. I'm talking about the early 90s, the nice family friendly, come on, bring it up now. Yeah, look at that. And now, the family friendly version. Awesome. An actual game from my childhood, but like most games, I only had the shareware because half more than that costs money, and it would have taken hours to pirate all, like, two megabytes of this game. Episodic gaming exploded in the early 90s, and while Apogee, the height of gaming excitement, was at the forefront of it, the DOS era was the Wild West. And one of the companies looking to break into the scene was Potomac Computer Systems, with their first game called Z. A company started in Maryland by a young man by the name of Tim Sweeney who decided to rename his company because Potomac Computer Systems is a boring name, right? Z is fine though, no changes. But the company needed to be rebranded into something with attitude, so it became Epic Mega Games. You might recognize them currently as Epic Games, those crazy kids who own that big money printing machine. The day of victory is at hand. The day of revenge. The day of the sun. No, not again, you sons of bitches! They only let me use Rise of Skywalker clips now because I shipped someone in the large intestines. How he got in the large intestines, I'll never know. Ha 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 ha. Ah, he died. So, Tim Sweeney's first game after Z and the first to be created under the name Epic Mega Games, a name they did not officially change until 1999, after Unreal Tournament, that first game was Jill of the Jungle. And if you think calling stuff Mega was just a little thing they did for the company, let me introduce you to Mega Noise. If you enjoy this, you won't want to miss Drum Blaster, our room-shaking sound effect maker. Press the QWERTY keys to make terrible noises. Oh, you bet, let's go. <laughs> Sound effects are pretty cool. Right here, we boot up the game, and we're treated to the first 256-color VGA DOS-powered thirst trap that I can remember. And if you think I'm gonna take this opportunity to make crude, lazy sex jokes, well, you're obviously a longtime fan. Welcome back. And what do you do in this game? What challenges await this surprisingly clean and extremely blonde jungle dweller? Snakes? Frogs? Crabs? Bees? Uh... Phoenix? Giant ants? Lizard men? Pac-Man ghosts? Instant death spikes? Whatever these things are. Water? Here we see the majestic and copyright-friendly derpfish. The derpfish exists! There's something so comforting about a simple platformer. Shift to jump, arrow keys to move around, alt to throw your weapon. One of those fun little DOS platformers that feels forgotten when you've got, like, it hitting us with that Commander Keen. This just in, yet another computer game hero has fallen victim to an immense unstoppable force known as Epic. The young superhero, B. Blaze, yesterday announced his retirement at age 13. I just can't compete with these cool epic heroes, said Blaze, because he's 13 and can't spell. But now that I'm retired, I have more time to play with my slide rule. Ah, oh, it's an epic burn on that fucking nerd. This game throws shade at Commander Keen, which at the time is fairly niche, being a PC game, and then takes aim at Pac-Man for some reason, and then the shroom-chomping Nintendo mascot himself, who is not cool enough to compete with Jill, and is also said to be 72 years old, and instead of retiring, he's gonna clean gorilla cages at the local zoo. I think Mario might have won this contest. I'm surprised at how much air control you have while jumping. It's a little more stiff than what you might expect with something like Duke Nukem or Mario, and it still works most of the time. Usually, if you die, you can only blame yourself. Like here, where I die in the first level on some instant kill spikes. I can skip them, this is a secret area, but I won't. I have to go up here and collect nothing. I'm looking for apples, which are sort of like Mario coins in that they give you points and health. There isn't a live system, and if you die, you go back to the start of the level, or sometimes a checkpoint, and you can save anywhere at any time, so it doesn't matter. Episode 1 is Volume 1 of a three-part... mega-series. You are Jill of the Jungle, the brave and beautiful star of this game. Your journey will lead you through startling action and puzzle sequences as you zoom through 16 gigantic levels. So fasten your seatbelt and prepare for the journey of your lifetime.
until Jazz Jackrabbit in 1994. After all, who says a lady can't slay a few monsters? Hey, where's the in-game tech shitting on Samus? There are a lot of surprises hidden in this game, including a secret bonus level. It's not a secret if you tell me, but I already knew about it. See, so you collect gems in these levels to open new areas on the overworld map. And if you visit all the levels, you'll end up with an extra one that'll let you visit the bonus level. Which is level 593 sextillion, 480 quintillion, 156 quadrillion, 531 trillion, 765 billion, 536 million, 123,791. The amount of content they put in these old games still amazes me. This episode isn't very difficult, it being the shareware that you could get for free as opposed to the full game that you can get for free. I got this version off of good old games for nothing. I'm constantly at war with myself over whether or not I enjoy this game because it's good or because of nostalgia. I mean, it plays well enough, it has some fun features. In the first couple of levels, you'll be transforming into a phoenix so you can fly, or a fish so you can swim, or a frog so you can have a little taste of what it's like to be the most annoying thing in this game. <laughs> A few levels are centered around puzzles like the castle, which tells you in no uncertain terms that it's tricky, because you have to jump onto this slightly lower platform to get one of the keys. Yeah. Odd choice for sound effects, but okay. The knight's puzzle has you dodging killer suits of armor and doing switch puzzles before abandoning being a puzzle entirely and having you gather some keys and marvel at particle effects that slow the game down. Shut up, commenters, I'm playing with the cycles that God gave me. Episode 1 ends with Jill outrunning some bees and the game telling you to sit down and enjoy this in-game cutscene. No, seriously, look at this shit. It says ending sequence. I have no control over this. She turns into a phoenix and flies into... Uh, space? Another planet? With mushrooms? No, that can't be right. Five hundred miles away from her starting point, Jill wanders into a strange and mystical grove of mushrooms. Transforming back into her human form, she stops to ponder the situation. This is a place unlike anything seen by the eyes of a human. But the j jungle? Did she... what? What unspeakable forces of nature lie beyond the grove? Can a lady like Jill uncover the mysteries of this place and escape without messing up her blonde hair? Find the answers in Jill Goes Underground. But... space? Flying? What is happening? Why wasn't her hair messed up when she got turned into a frog or a bird made of fire? Oh, she's got a change of clothes and all the sound effects are different, and the frogs are rabbits now, and she's belching knives. The one problem with these knives, compared to the spinning blades, is that they go in a straight line, and anything below you tends to not get hit unless you move down and get it to boomerang into something. This game is lying to me. I'm confused, because that's the background from the last level of episode one. So did we or did we not transform into a phoenix and fly into space where we landed on a mushroom planet and threw knives at killer rabbits and malicious caterpillars? Can a phoenix burn in space? I feel like an asshole for asking a question like that. It's a video game. Unless Jill of the Jungle prided itself on the scientific accuracy of mythical creatures, it seems like a petty nitpick, but not a funny one. And this episode doesn't have an overworld map like the last one. It's linear, so we're off to Montezuma's castle, which I think might be the closest we've come to a jungle. And the frogs are back. Outstanding. Crocodiles. That's jungle adjacent, right? Just like the flame spewing... things? Uh... You know, I only had the first episode as a kid, and this game is going places I really didn't expect. This game turned into a fever dream really quick. We're still doing all the stuff from episode one, but it's slightly more difficult, even if the game is telling you what to do. Oh, a high jump. Switch puzzles, sure. It's visually very nice. The sound effects are still a little weird this time around. I'm not sure how long... I want to get off this ride now. Even the music is sinister.
and the demons throw attacks at you that are like compound projectiles, like a bunch at once. What is this episode? Where did this come from? Was Tim Sweeney going through some shit? This is more like it. This is nice, chill. It doesn't take place inside of a fiery inferno that houses the souls of the damned. The music still sounds like it does, though. Jill doesn't swim to shit in this game. Oh god, we're back in hell. And Jill swims equally as well in lava. Hey, look, it's a demon's hideout. We can put all this to bed right now. That's really conveniently labeled. So is this maze. Man, Tim Sweeney was really thoughtful and conscientious towards the player at the start. But I'm sure us gamers wore him down eventually and turned him bitter. It's what we do. This is a hard maze. Is it? I don't, uh... You know, when you write that on a wall in a game, I'm not sure if you're trying to fuck with me or not. I just... I just want to get out of the underground. I don't like the underground. Long live Z Is that who's doing this to me? Is it Z I can't take much more of this. Please, God, no. I don't want any more weirdness, much less eternal weirdness. Winners don't lose frogs, but do they lick toads? What are you talking about? I can't sprint. There's no sprinting. It's, it's 1992. No one has put sprinting like that in games yet. Why am I trapped in Freddy's sweater? Oh. Oh. Hey. Jill better think fast. Oh, no, 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 no. She was raised in the jungle. That's not her superpower. Yes, I got all four keys. Your lucky death is a slap on the wrist in this game. I'm lucky death is a slap on the wrist in this game. The bat hanger? Okay, this episode is drugs. I don't care what the end screen says about the jungle being safe for normal jungle stuff to occur. You know what normal jungle stuff is? It's a land that God, if he exists, has, has created in anger. Taking a close look at, at what's around us, there, there is some sort of a harmony. It is the harmony of overwhelming and collective murder. When I say this, I say this all full of admiration for the jungle. Okay, see that? Jill saves the prince. That's something I can wrap my head around, not a fucking mushroom samba. The overworld map is back, and also different. It's overhead, and you can see that, yes, there was a pixel put in to make sure that we could see Teddy. It functions a lot like the one in the first episode, except this time there's a maze, and I recognize the tiles here from the regular level, so you're not fooling me, 30-year-old video game. Jill is dressed in blue, and all the sounds are different again. No! No, why? <laughs> Did you shell out 200 bucks for a sound blaster card in 1991? Well, now you too can hear Tim Sweeney sneeze every time you exit a level. <laughs> Episode 3 is probably the best one, and really the fully formed version of Jill of the Jungle. There's still no jungle, and no, the forest doesn't count. It's a totally different climate. 
It's a lot like episode one, except harder. The demons are back and... A lot stronger than I remember. The knife won't kill the demon, only the spinning blade, so putting him in this level is kind of a dick move. They're not even the main antagonist. That would be the lizard men, these, let's face it, badly drawn sprites in this level where you board their ship and the game doesn't give you any weapons to fight them. And the demons that come later are still way harder. Most of these levels are fine though, except when Jill tries her luck in the pyramid puzzle because I'm petty and that's spelled wrong. We've been turned into a frog and we have the choice to either hop or leap. There is no difference between these two things. The game really ramps up the difficulty on level 11, which is called level 11 because the game is run out of level names. It's got that demon murder room for before, the killer armor suits, death spikes, and the frogs. It is particularly evil to put the frogs against this green background. It still has nothing on the next level, which is called if you think the next level is number 12, you're right. This level is pretty cruel, even by the standards of DOS platformers, but if you made it this far, they've already got your money. Jill finally discovers the castle so we can do all that print saving that's been promised at the top of the screen this whole time. This one's pretty tricky, too. Not as bad as if you think the next level is number 12, you're right. But have a look at this death here, where I touch the very outside of the hitbox of the killer armor suit, and tell me that's not some bullshit. There's a second part to this castle, with the prison cell holding the prints clearly marked around the center of the map. It's as simple as getting a gem and dodging lots of frogs. So they knew what a pain these frogs were, and they filled the last level with them. Or instead of saving the prints, you can just head to the exit. No! 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 How about saving the prince before you leave? Like, is this game titled Jill Leaves Level 14 without saving the prince, or what? Motherfucker, we still haven't actually gone to a jungle, so I don't know anymore. Okay, technically she goes into the jungle once when she journeys into the forest in the second level, but then in the level after that, Jill explores the forest. Although there are no trees in that level, but there might be a canonical explanation because the lizard men were planning to bulldoze the jungle to put up condos. Because they're looking to retire somewhere nice, but Jill, who apparently hates the elderly, doesn't want them to. And I'm gonna side with her. We do save the prince, the game forces you. Finally reaching the castle and opening the prison cell, Jill meets the prince, Jill of the jungle. You have not only saved my life, you have saved the jungle from great peril. You have the eternal gratitude of my family. Now I ask you only one more favor, Jill. Jill, will you marry me? Being rescued from a prison cell by a hot jungle chick with a lax dress coat and then marrying her? Man, that's like 90% of my fantasy. She says, okay, the jungle is saved, the prince is saved. There are no bosses in this game, so I guess we also eradicated the lizard men at some point. And I'm having some trouble connecting this to the studio that would become Epic Games minus the Mega. Cosmetic DLC with a spiked leather one piece is $9.99. Okay, kids, Sivvy needs you to send me pictures of your mom's credit card, front and back, and the little number. Oh my god, stop releasing new games! What in the goddamn fresh hell is a frog monster? Don't you know I have to do a vinyl goddess from Mars video now?